Well, trade barriers between Canada's provinces are costing the economy up to $50 billion per year. That's why Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall is pushing for a Canada free trade zone. B.C. Premier Christy Clark and Alberta Premier Dave Hancock are also backing the move. The push comes as Federal Industry Minister James Moore calls for trade barriers to be dismantled between the provinces. As well, Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall joins us now with more from Regina. Premier, I don't think most Canadians know that we have some barriers between provinces that are higher than barriers between Canada and foreign countries. How did that even happen? Well, you're right. I'm not sure Canadians are aware of it, but it's exactly the case, uh, especially after we have free trade with the European Union, something we support. Uh, there's this uh, the real prospect of a company in uh, the European Union countries being able to bid on procurement, for example, in our country, uh, and have a bit of an advantage over companies in other provinces who are affected by the protectionism of certain, of certain provincial governments. So we've got something in Western Canada called the U.S. Partnership, as you know and have detailed on the source, Ezra, and it's basically a, a much more aggressive free trade agreement between our three provinces. We've done things like harmonized transportation regulations. So if you're hauling something from Tabor, Alberta to Swift Current, Saskatchewan, you've got the same regime, the same regulations to work with, working on one single business registry. If you're registered to do business in Regina, you're registered in Kelowna automatically. Common sense changes that make it easier to do business and commerce, the removal of trade barriers, the removal of, of dumb. For example, in Western Canada, we had the, uh, the, the specter really of, uh, of a rancher on the Saskatchewan side technically having to get his cattle inspected to move to his, the same pasture that happens to straddle the border and go onto the Alberta side. So there's common sense changes that can happen in this country that will create some uh, much more economic momentum. And if we've got free trade with other countries, around the world, and we should, we ought to have free trade amongst the provinces. That's a great point. Let me ask you this. Have you had any uh, reaction from the two biggest economies in Canada, Ontario and Quebec? They, they both recently had elections, so their premiers are maybe finding their new mandates. Uh, do they seem open to this Western Canadian uh, uh, initiative? Well, I don't know uh, about the specific proposal we're making. Uh, I haven't got a direct reaction from either. And, and just on that specific proposal, what the new U.S. partnership uh, trade agreement was, was a negative list. In other words, we started from the, from the position that there would be no protection for any sectors, and then provinces maybe negotiated certain things into the agreement as exemptions. The AIT, the Agreement on Internal Trade that governs the country and all the provinces, was the opposite. We started from the premise that everything's protected and then had to fight for sectors uh, under which a free trade uh, would, uh, would, would rule the day. So uh, that's the specific proposal. Now, I have not heard from Ontario or Quebec or other provinces on it. We expect to hear that from the premiers uh, this summer in, in Prince Edward Island. I can tell you, I've talked to Premier Cuillard in Quebec, and I'm hopeful. Here is somebody who's very interested in improving uh, economic conditions across the country and in his province and sees that removing barriers, I think, or, or freer trade between Quebec and all parts of the world, including other provinces in Canada, is a good thing. So again, I'm not putting any words in their mouth but I'm hopeful that that, that position might prevail because I've been encouraged by it. Ontario, it, you know, we've heard that they're going to continue with some of the protectionist measures they have. For example, a 10% head start they give to Ontario companies on procurement that puts ours and you know, the rest of Canada at a disadvantage. I have our companies here saying, look, we can't be Boy Scouts about this. If, if one province is going to discriminate against uh, us, then we need to use moral suasion to, to, to see freer trade. And if that doesn't work, well, what you know, are the, the options then uh, of uh, uh, some sort of commensurate action on our part is what they're asking. So this is, what, this is how we escalate into protectionism, and we want to avoid that. Yeah, I mean, you know, that reminds me of some of the protectionism we see with pipelines. I mean, I'm glad that you and Premier Clark are working together on this free trade initiative, but when I start hearing pre premiers and provinces like Ontario saying, well, we're going to prefer our province and shut out those other provinces with a 10% barrier. I mean, imagine if every one of the 10 provinces took a drawbridge and moat approach. I mean, that's how I feel with the Northern Gateway Pipeline and other pipeline proposals, provinces trying to bully others. I, I feel like it, that, that would make us not one united country, but 10 little fiefdoms. Is there a national cause you can appeal to, almost a philosophical, come on, guys, we're one country, uh, moral argument as well as a technical business argument? 
Well, I, I think there is. We can make a credible case today as, uh, as a country that we are not an emerging energy power, that we are an energy power in the world, and we are most assuredly, Ezra, a food power. Mm. And in a world where the fastest growing economies uh, on Earth, uh, principally in Asia, uh, desire energy security and food security above all other uh, things in terms of, of trade, I like Canada's chances, yeah. but only if we start acting like energy power, an energy power, only if we act like a food power, and that means, yes, getting goods to Asia, but moving up across the country. It's why we support gate, uh, Gateway. It's why we support uh, a much more effective rail transportation system. Japan, this uh, year, as a result of the rail backlog, backlog stopped buying Canadian wheat and switched to the United States. Huh. We need to move our goods to market and every conveyance uh, has to be on the table and, and needs to get needs to be sustainable but needs to get the approval of each province. That's pipelines and railways and uh, and trucking um, all of the above if we are to fulfill the potential that we have as a country. Uh, and I worry about the same things you are, as If we set up borders between us as provinces, we will never get those goods to the market, to a world that wants them, and we will leave a lot, so much potential on the table for this generation of Canadians and many, many future generations uh, in our country. Premier, well said. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope your initiative is a successful one. Thanks for making the time for us today, folks.